Hello to all my viewers. This is Dr. Tawal Mehta. And today we will understand what are Haywood cases in structural equation modeling. A Haywood case means that more than 100% of the variable's variance is explained by the latent factors, which implies that the residual variance is negative. For a model with one factor, it means that the standardized loading is larger than one. We will try to understand the Haywood cases in the next slide. Loyalty is a construct which is captured with the help of four items s1 s2 s3 and s4 these are the error terms now it is possible that uh, the path coefficient of any one of them its beta value will be greater than one means factor loading is is greater than one so the explained variance will naturally be greater than one now if i talk about the unexplained variance which is the difference of 1 minus beta square which is lambda will become negative so the unexplained variance will become negative and the beta square is greater than 1 this is the problem of Haywood cases now let's try to understand why this problem occurs in your model the reasons for Haywood cases are first lack of multivariate normality second presence of outlier third multicollinearity among the variables. Fourth, small sample size with a large number of indicators. Fifth, factor loadings of less than 0.5. Sixth, model is misspecified. Seven, only two indicators on one construct or the problem of degree of freedom. Remedial measures. The first thing is to achieve the multivariate normality. Second, deletion of outliers. If the multicollinearity is present, removing any vari any one variable which are highly correlated with other. If the sample size is small, then increase the sample size. If the model is misspecified, we will have to correct the model. Then we can convert the model into the higher order models. And instead of maximum likelihood, we will be using generalized least square. These are all remedial measures for Haywood cases. Now let's try to understand that why he would case uh, problem occurs in our model. It is necessary that uh, in the items of the same construct, see S1, S2, S3, S4, these are the items of the same construct. We require a high correlation among them. You can see S1, S2, S, uh, S2, S3, they are highly correlated. We require a high correlation among them. But we require a less correlation among the items of the different construct. Means S1 to S4 should not be correlated with T1 with T4. You can see here S1 and T1 are not correlated. The correlation is, very, is less. S1 and T3 the correlation is less. But sometimes what happens that these items are correlated which is not desirable. So, S1, T2 are correlated, S3, T3 are correlated, S2, T4 are correlated or any combination is or any combination of them can happen. This is not only the case. S1, S4 and T1, T4 may not, may not be correlated but their weights uh, when they multiply, the construct also becomes correlated with each other. That is, loyalty is correlated with satisfaction. So either items or the construct, when they show the correlation, the problem of Haywood cases occur. The reasons for high correlation can be data is manipulated. That is either the researcher has copy and pasted the data. Second, fault in the questionnaire framing as all the respondents are having similar opinion. Now let's try to detect this problem in SPSS data file. So, I have taken four items for organizational commitment, OC1, OC2, OC3, OC4. And for environmental perception, EP1, EP2, EP3. On the basis of this, the model has been created. See, organizational commitment, four items. Environmental perception, three items. Now, let me try to run this model. And what errors it gives me? Let's see. So, an error occurred while attempting to fit the model. 
why this has happened that I will explain. Let us read this. The sample moment matrix is not positive definite. It could fail to be positive definite for any of the following reasons. The sample covariance matrix or the sample correlation matrix contains a data entry error. One. The observed variables are linearly dependent, perhaps because the sample size is too small. Let's go in the data. You can see here, and I'll keep this aside. Yeah, you can see here, uh, OC1 and OC3 values, they are almost same. Similarly, EP1 and EP3 are not EP1 and EP3, just see OC4 and EP3, OC4 and EP3. Deliberately, the entry has been done in such a way that Haywood cases happen. So, this is a case when the, when the items, the values of the items have been copy and pasted, this problem will occur. Let's come on the uh, SPSS MS Canvas, click OK. So, there is an error and because of which the, yeah, you can see the model is not running. You are not getting any minimum here. Now, what to do? So, we will go in the SPSS data file. We will find out, just a minute, the items which are correlated with each other. Correlate, bivariate, transfer all the items this side, click OK. Now, what you will do? Uh, you will double click here and if the pivot does not get active, no need to worry, go here, pivot, pivoting trace, transfer the statistics, this one, statistics here, right? So we are having a correlation of each item with the other item. Simply, I will I'll copy this and into the Excel file. You can see here, this is my Excel file. So, when you are having large number of items, how to detect that the items are correlated with each other? Just simply copy here, go into conditional formatting, highlight cells, rules greater than. So, just try to find out where the items are correlated, highly correlated with each other. OC1 and OC3, it shows a correlation of 1. OC4 and EP3, which is not at all desirable. It shows a correlation of 1. And OC4 and EP3 is a 1 and the same, same thing. So, we will have to delete any, uh, any one of these items or maybe we will have to delete 2 also because the correlations are high among them. So, this is the first problem. Now, let us go back on the data. It is quite likely possible that the data has been pasted, copy pasted like this. See, I will give the example like this uh, on the column like this way. This is first possibility that is column wise pasting or the data has been pasted row wise like this. Right. So, we will have to clean this also. So, here also we can detect that problem of uh, row wise copy and pasting that can be done with the help of we will go in data identify duplicate cases i will transfer all these items here and click ok now you can see the primary cases are 245 and duplicate cases are 155 so this is this may create a problem okay how we can remove this duplicate case we'll again go in in the spss data file make sure data view is on now click on a and one so primary case and duplicate case click here right click on it sort ascending all the duplicate cases will be highlighted you can just simply select from here press it and clear so you will get uh, your data quality will become healthy let's proceed further now when this is done you will again go in the canvas and we, have, we very well know that there are some items which are strongly correlated with each other. What to do now? So, OC3 and EP3, we are deleting it. So, I will pick up the cross button from here. 1, 2, 3, 4. 
let me try to run the model but definitely it will give me an error of degree of freedom what to do no need to worry let's see is the model running we'll go in view text and it has given me the error the model is probably unidentified we can re definitely resolve this issue it is very easy what you'll do you will double click here and set the parameter regression weight setting the metric to one I have already discussed this thing in my previous video. Kindly refer my previous video of why to set the metric one. Now let's run the model again. We have, uh, the minimum was achieved, which is quite good. We'll go in view text, model fit, fine, 2.825 and therefore the model is running successfully. Let's go back on the canvas. Activate the up arrow, activate the standardized estimates, now, after doing this, after correcting this, uh, if you get here the correlation between any two constructs, make sure when I'm talking about standardized estimates, I'm talking about the correlation. When the correlation between the two constructs is more than 0.8, you get a high correlation here, right? You get a very high correlation that is about 0.8. Then definitely you will have to go for higher order constructs. Here it's 0 .5, 0 0.5, so nothing to worry. But if you get more than 0.8, so press the down arrow, delete this, and include the one more construct. Now this is a higher order. So when you are having a high correlation among two constructs, you will have to go for higher order models. So double click on it. Uh, you can write down here, HOC, higher order constructs. Now load this, connect this path HOC with EP. Make sure whenever you are using HOC, you have to place regression weight one on both the arrows, right? This is basically a uh, to address the problem of degree of freedom. So one and one, done. Now OC and EP has turned to be an endogenous variable and therefore you will also have to insert the error term. Now we will have to name this. Never give the error term names uh, from here. Go in plugins, name unobserved variables and the error terms are done. Now try to run this model. Fine. Now again press the up arrow and see the standardized estimates. You can see it. Now after doing this, Still you feel that, or rather, uh, if you get any path coefficient whose beta value is more than 1, it means that still the Haywood cases exist. For example, anywhere, you, if you get here, this value more than 1, or here, you get the value more than 1, then still the Haywood cases exist, and you will have to convert this uh, model into the lower order. How you can do this, I will explain. So let me repeat again, after introducing a HOC and running the model, if any of the path shows the standardized regression, that is standardized regression estimates are having beta value greater than one, any, any of them, either this or either this, then Haywood cases still exist. And this model you will have to convert into the lower order. How you can do it? Press the down arrow. Now remove this. One, two, three, four, remove this. And now you directly connect this. What does it mean? That the two uh, constructs are not at all different. They are part of the same construct. You will have to merge these two constructs into one. And let me give the name here. The name will now not be HOC. It will, uh, will name this as factor one and run it and you view the text model fit yeah you got an error uh, just notes for the model the model is probably unidentified no need to worry so you will click here again and set the parameter regression one wait one run it and let us check the model fit so the model fit has increased to 29.337 so, uh, as we did not have the problem of Haywood cases, this model is, is not a good fit. 
and therefore our original solution which was there was much more appropriate than this solution which was our original solution let's see so our this model where we deleted uh, two items which were strongly correlated this remedy was much better than converting the model into the lower order let's see the model fit it's 2.825 and nfi rfi ifi tli cfi they are all more than 0.9 which is quite good so this was all about the Haywood cases, it's remedial measures. For more videos on SPSSMS, kindly refer to my playlist in which I already uploaded many videos on SPSSMS. Please don't forget to subscribe the channel and press the like button. You can also follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter.